<laughs> on but Twitter. That's, but that's know? the cult of personality element. And right. there is a significant cult of personality with Tulsi Gabbard supporters. There, there's a cult of personality on Bernie's side, too, even though he's yeah. the candidate that I'm immensely supportive of and think he's the best policy-wise candidate in the race. I don't really think that it's close. Um, but, you know, there's some candidates that, that have cult of personalities. I don't think Warren does. Oh, really? I don't, I, I actually don't, I don't necessarily, I mean, cause I do think on one level, I think we're in just an immediate space where it's like, look, there's levels of intensity. I'm totally not denying yeah. that. But I think to some extent, like a social media strategy for any of these people entails a personality cult. True. I just think Warren's base is such a mishmash of ideologies at this current moment. Uh, there's no coherent ideological base of like mm -hmm. the people there. I mean, when I went to this Warren rally, it was really interesting. There were a yeah, lot of establishment me. people there, you know, people who sense. supported say there's a lot. The most consistent second choice was Kamala Harris. But it doesn't make sense to me, really, because I just I, I guess I'm looking at this more from people who are going up against corporate power. I guess my litmus test or my, the thing that I care most about are is a willingness and a, and a gumption to take on corporate power. And I don't think it's close. That's when I say number one and two for Bernie and Warren. It, I mean, Elizabeth Warren taking on the banks, it's legendary. It's legendary stuff. And Bernie Sanders has been doing it for decades and decades himself. So uh, when I'm, I guess we all place value on different things. The reason that I'm, supportive of those two in that way is because I'm, I'm so, um, I admire their, uh, gumption and their, and their willingness to take on corporate power in a way that I think is, uh, it, it's unrivaled. Yeah. I actually agree with most of that. I don't, I don't have a problem. I mean, I have a theory as to why those people might be drawn to her. That isn't necessarily even her fault. It isn't her fault. Although I think to me, it does reflect even on domestic policy. Some of where like, and look, it's cool. It's cool that there's actually a difference between what I think legitimately is some type of democratic socialist answer versus like a progressive answer, right? Exactly. So like to that's me, the dis that's a distinction. And so I'm totally like, you wipe out fucking student debt. There's no new forms to fill out. Mm -hmm. There's no new like complications. Like you just do it, mm -hmm. right? And I, and so to me, like that simple structural stance is what appeals to me. But I and I think that where Warren is appealing to some of those people. I think, first of all, I mean, there is a broad, totally irrational hatred of Bernie Sanders that is like Definitely. really weird and you don't have to support him, but like the relation, like the fact that people who are like Clinton fans can say with a straight face that Bernie Sanders is like in it for himself is like, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of like weird psychological stuff going on with a lot of these people's issues with Bernie. But I do think that like beyond that, there, there is that a draw of like, well, she went to Harvard Law School. She's, or, you know, she's, excuse me, she's an instructor at Harvard Law School and she's very, the, the cult of smartness, which I have a weariness of, mm. right? And I think that that is applied to her. Now, it's what's, like describing what is, my father, the cult the, of smartness. Uh, the cult of smartness yeah. is describing most people's parents of that No, I know, you but know? I mean, like, there is yeah. there is the fetishization of the wonkiness. I mean, I, yes. I don't even, and I, I agree with you that it's not her fault, but it allows yeah, people to is, kind yeah. of reflect and say, oh, that's the that's the adult in the room. Right, and, and, and so to me, like part of my concern is like, I wanna refer, like where Elizabeth Warren stands out is not her intelligence. It is her willingness to say like, fuck the banks like that is where she is a different type of politician and has like a credible track record as somebody who's actually not just like another person who took a bunch of tests and then did this part of their career and that part of their career and blah 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 blah, blah. but the part that those people are responding to and i think also now the way her campaign is branding mm -hmm. is this like emphasis on plans and all of this stuff which it's like i mean guys like this is all going to be thrown out you know, as soon as you get into any kind of legislative process. And like the only way you're gonna have like a structure around it is I do think in Sanders, like I think it's true. It's gonna be a movement. That's the only way that any of this stuff has a prayer of passing. I think that's, those are great points. I mean, I don't blame her campaign for, for jumping on the plan thing because she was really off to a very slow start and yeah. what got her oh, that totally. traction was the substance and the plan and the wonkiness. So again, I, I don't even put that on her and you know, it's because I'm a show for her and getting paid for, by her campaign, obviously. <laughs> well, but you should is, disclose that. But, right. <laughs> Guys, can we put that Emma's a surrogate? 
from what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> She's, I love it. Like, there's totally going to be people who actually take that literally. Yeah. Emma is not a paid campaign worker. For no, Elizabeth and I, I'm just trying. And, yes. you know, I'm not, I don't have a hill to die on, but this right. is my independent assessment of how they're doing and what I think is appealing to people. Right. And, where I worry about Bernie, and I don't think I've talked about this. I guess, I've done this in private conversations. And oh, this is awesome! Bring it, bring us the first public. So, right. so I'm I'm again I'm massively supportive of him. I think he's a, you know one of the greatest Americans of the past few decades, right? Um, and, and now you're gonna fucking smear. <laughs> And Sorry. I'm going to smear him. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think he's the best candidate to be Donald Trump. People should and, really look up what smear means, right, by the way. I know. Incidentally, it's, it's side just, note. It doesn't matter. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but I, totally wor I worry that yeah. a lot of us in the progressive movement are underestimating the very strong desire to return to normalcy mm -hmm. and to move away even from that populism. And it, it freaks people out because it's associated with the anger of 2016, whereas they want, nor you know, it's, it's what's entirely driving Biden, it's electability and normalcy. But Bernie does not represent normalcy. He represents an overhaul in the system. And there's this uh, paranoia and fear of that Trump has created within the, the broader Democratic electorate, not people on Twitter, not people in the industry but they want to just return to things, just being sane, just being normal. Mm -hmm. And it's super unfair. Like, I'm, like it's unfair to say, you know, that w Warren is uh, establishment or that these people are drawn to her, whatever. Um, it's super unfair that Bernie is being pigeonholed as divisive. It should not be that way. In fact, it's an outrage because he was trying to be as inclusive as possible and in bringing his supporters into the fore, into the fore um, almost to a detriment, really, when I think he was way too soft on Hillary Clinton towards the end of his campaign um, because he recognized the threat of Donald Trump. Right. But now he's being painted as divisive, which is completely false. And there are a lot of people in the electorate that have internalized that. And they're so fearful of that divisiveness because the whole uh, feeling of that, that whole um, just kind of unsettling attitude, they associate with Trump. So mm -hmm. any, it, mm -hmm. that's why Bernie, I don't think, is catching on that much right now. And I, I worry that he won't get the nomination purely because of that fear within the electorate that I think we're undervaluing. And, and that's not what I want at all. But... No, I, I think that's a valid fear. My, my concern would be, and, th and because I, I mean, this is why I'm also somebody who said, you know, from the beginning, and I will see, like, obviously he's fucking up, although I'm not always sure that Biden's fuck ups even track as much as people like us think they track. Like, he's objectively falling in the We polls. had this conversation last time, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. We, right, exactly. We, and yeah. yeah, and I think we, may, we might have even had it more than once. Like, I think Biden still does have a lane, unfortunately, and I think that he still is the lane that exists of people that are just about, I don't want to think about it, I just want this to end. And that totally exists in the electorate. But that's Kamala Harris to an extent, and there is some of that with Warren, which she doesn't deserve those supporters, but she represents more normalcy she than Bernie. She represents, but if you start to, and I I mean, my concern, I guess, I guess to be really, I'll, you know, I think you're right. And my blunt pro my blunt concerns about Warren is that one, I think if you really start narrowing the field, like if she actually goes ahead of Sanders, at least the part of that wing of people supporting her are super disingenuous. I don't think that that's necessarily a solid support. Her support soft. At right the now. end of the yeah. day, it will go. I think just as there's plenty of people who are really more committed to a sort of progressive politics, who I I think will revert back to Bernie. From her, I think that there is a contingent of people that are responding to her for these cultural identifying reasons that hmm. won't necessarily stay with her if it's between her and a Kamala Harris or a Joe Biden, right? And then, and then more broadly, like I, I think in a general election, I think like yes, there's normalcy versus anger, but then there's also like what are the specific demographics that you actually have to like put a map together. So like I'm, I've always said, I think Kamala Harris is a super talented politician. I think she's charismatic. I think that she has a lot of like standard issue traits that you'd expect from somebody. Now, do I think that she is super well poised to like win Wisconsin? No, I don't. And, and whereas like 
Luckily, Bernie in that map, I think, is at a super advantage in totally. terms of like, and people, and people Warren is better than Biden. Sorry, but yeah, yeah, but Biden please. pulls second, and so then that's like what's frustrating is like you can't even use that. Or even though Bernie's the best candidate, truly, to win the Midwest, which is to win the presidency, right? You can't even use that. But Biden second. Okay, I don't know what that means, but he needs to just keep hammering Biden on trade. I, you know. Did, Keeps. He hasn't done anything. He did it a couple of weeks ago, I and guess. I mean, we'll 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 keep we'll keep coaching Bernie. Yeah. I know no, some, I mean, I just I want him. <laughs> we want. we they need to be more aggressive. It's, I, I'm worried. Do you also think though, with Warren, and I'm, I'll just be devil's advocate. I mean, she went from she had a slippery rollout, then she was totally ignored, and she was told, and they were totally right, like. You know, we're talking about actual shit. And you guys are looking at like Beto and Buttigieg and all of these nonsense candidates. Yep. But for the past several months, the past couple of months, she's had nothing but the wind behind her back. Oh, totally. When she gets some actual pushback, like, because that to me is like, that's the contrast with Bernie, right? Like, it's relentless and constant assault and bias. So that disadvantages him because it starts to seep into the narrative, mm -hmm. like you're saying. On the other hand, it's like, Still at fifteen percent, like yeah. every single person's against me. Still raising my small donors. Still doing it with Warren. We have no idea. Like she's at the phase where people are throwing her the towel. They're giving her the water. Like yeah. this is awesome. I don't know what happens when she gets any pushback. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think we're also going to see that with Kamala Harris, who's currently cresting upwards, right? right. So she's at the you know thirtieth percentile of her bell curve. Totally. Um, Warren's probably going to go down a little bit, but I do think she holds. More than people think, because again, um, I, what we're seeing with her ideological, the support of, or the ideology behind her supporters is it's it's very fluid, which I don't think makes sense. But you know what? Sometimes things don't make sense. Um, I think that it kind of you kind of bring it back to like the media being positive about her. It's also that fetishization of the intellectual elements, right? So the media can see her as more legitimate because she's doing all these concrete things, which I think in men a lot of them are really smart, but Bernie's talking about the same stuff. He's just doing it in a more populist way. And populism scares the shit out of the media. It scares the shit out of them. So even though Warren's a more classical liberal and they're talking basically about many of the same ideas, not you know her foreign policy, going to APAC, I'm all against that. That scares me to 100%. Her foreign policy is awful. Yeah. So it, <laughs> I, it, it, it's, I could like lean into that hard. Like, yeah. It's really bad. No, I, yes, you know, yes, I, I, yeah. I, that's like an obvious, obvious weak point of her campaign. Um, and I think that that's going to be uh, more fleshed out in debate number two. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think what you're saying is right, is that the media really wants uh, people to be substantive and intellectuals. And so she presents progressive policy in that way, whereas Bernie is more of a populist and that scares them. That scares them. And they think that, you know, Warren can, we can have a conversation with her about corporate interests and she'll, she's a Harvard professor. She's a more intellectual. She'll be more amenable. Whereas Bernie is literally storming into Walmart executive boardrooms and t telling off the executives there to pay their workers a higher wage. It's, totally. It's and really I, different. And I think is what you said before, you totally could be right about people's desire for normalcy, 100%, and that could work against Bernie. But I think conversely, Buttigieg and Warren, and I'll say somewhat unfairly in her case, I think totally fairly in his case, <laughs> I find the whole existence of him is fucking ludicrous. It is so driven by a very narrow set of people's narcissism and conception of themselves that has very little track with normal people. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you that's know? fair with her, but I hear what you're saying. Well, I think it's judge. not fair with her in terms of the totality of her record, but it's what they're responding to that you're talking about. It's the image they're that they're all presenting. about that she has degrees, that she talks yes. in a certain way. And, you know, again, I, I probably do have more skeptic, like I, I, I'm very dubious about sort of like building a brand on policy proposals for a variety of reasons, which I've talked about. But I think even regardless, like th there's a way in which you can just hear like Buttigieg, he speaks Norwegian. Right. Warren, she taught at Harvard. I mean, my God. Yeah. Whereas for plenty of people, I, I don't like, those are not necessarily advantages at all. And I think that like, Sanders, in a way that isn't either the anger or the sort of like 
brand identity of people who write about politics is just kind of going out and saying to people like the Walmart workers, like, hey, you deserve to be treated a lot better. Let's do this in a way that's very simple and very appro yeah. approachable. The difference between Blue Judge and Warren is that Warren's talking about so much substance and has a oh. wonderful record to back it up on, on domestic policy where I think it's like oh, Blue Judge phenomenal. Is trash. Um, Blue Judge is, is trash. I, yeah, yeah. I, Blue Judge is, I mean, but, and Blue Judge is also like, I mean, he's, it's like run for president, lose, but build a profile, then go work at a bank and MSNBC for a couple of years, move to another state where you can run statewide. I mean, can we just say how fucking ridiculous is it yeah. that this guy is building the whole, like, I'm the Midwest guy. It's like, motherfucker, you run a college town that, incidentally, you're, like, shredding police brutality yeah. reports in between tweeting out, oh, congratulations, little Nas X. Oh, no, we're not going to investigate that. Fuck that. <laughs> He he like he yeah, he's just like oh that was a proud moment oh your son got tased get the fuck out of my office yeah. <laughs> he I mean he and he can't run statewide and his whole brand and this is another thing that pisses me off about the people who cover politics like I'm not some fucking Midwest expert but I could say like hey maybe a guy who is going from college town mayor to presidential candidate maybe there's a reason he's skipping some other steps yeah. I got to make just one more point. I know we've been Please. going on, but um, just to bring it back to what we're saying about how terrified the elites are of populism. Yeah. Um, when you talk about degrees, they're more comfortable with people being road scholars like Pete Buttigieg or going to these fancy schools and being intellectuals in their traditional sense because they are fundamentally undemocratic. Mm -hmm. They are fundamentally uh senatorial in the old school Roman sense where they want these philosopher kings ruling and telling everyone how things are good for them and how this policy is actually going to help you when the people don't know best and that it's all the smartest people in the room making decisions from the top down. That's why Bernie Sanders terrifies them and uh, Warren to a lesser extent, even though it's I think that they're underestimating her progressivism, but they feel that she can be senatorial and that she can be uh, th this intellectual that they can have a debate with and 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 make their elite conversations with. And, uh, really quickly yeah. before we get to these things, who is your least favorite Democrat besides <laughs> Joe Biden? I feel like besides, because that's, no, that's yeah, probably that's, the obvious pick. So who? That's my obvious. Who's pick. the runner-up? Um, Beto. Yeah. Woo. Why Beto more than uh, Buttigieg? Um, <laughs> because I I think that he's. Uh, when we're talking about statewide office, he actually could beat Cornyn. Mm. And there's an mm. arrogance mm -hmm. to his run. Oh, yeah. That bothers me even more. Like Buttigieg, it's like, I mean, that's arrogant too. So now you're, now you're, uh, you're making me <laughs> rethink it. But it's a tough one. My disdain for both is, is pr pretty immeasurable. That's high. Yeah. I, I would say Buttigieg just because I feel like. Beto's like raw need for love is very humanizing. <laughs> Buttigieg is like a McKinsey android who was like developed to like <laughs> yeah. gentrify, no. just like I understand your concern, black mother. He was, However, he was I am meeting with Nira Tanded. He was bred in a lab to be part yeah. wrote Harvard yeah. Road Scholar, Navy, or you yeah. know, being in the military. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, got called Alfred E. Newman in school, so we had to go kill uh, Afghan oh villagers. My. Yeah. Like this is not, this is not good news. He folks. really he has a he has a Napoleonish complex yeah, for sure. Totally. Yeah. And he's Beto's, short. That's the joke. <laughs> and Beto's just like, yeah, come on. Yeah. Where's my love? I know. I know. <laughs> like, like Beto's just like a fucking doofus. He's just having. I guess like, I life resent his half-assed Obama impression. It's just like, come on. It, you're, is it half-assed or like over -ass? Your like, Bill Clinton impression you were doing earlier is like six times better than his Obama impression. Ooh, well, he's so hyped up. Like what? Like like Obama would give these speeches that, you know, they always had like, a, like that's why we need to come together, uh, you know, okay, as, well, now as that's white kind of devils. Like, and, you know, what? Now that's kind of sounding like Bill Clinton. I'm questioning. I can't do, wait, I can't do Obama anymore. That's a problem. I need to get back uh, into training. But like, Beto, like Obama's had a, a arc, right? And yeah. Beto's all, like, what did you say, Matt? I was like, he already heard 
the chariots of fire music playing before he even started his speech. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the like, That's why I'm so excited and I'm so re and it's like, dude, you need to fucking build to the applause yeah. line. You can't just like come out and applause line it. You know, he's kind of like, yeah. he's kind of like the Chris Klein character in Election. Have you guys seen that? Yes. That's actually a really good call. Which I, I just yeah. Although, see? Reese Witherspoon is phenomenal. And if Reese movie. Witherspoon is Buttigieg, Chris Klein's a nicer guy. So I rest my Re case. Reese Witherspoon's Hillary Clinton. Come Reese on. Witherspoon is Hillary Clinton, but he could it could be Buttigieg. It could be. It could be Buttigieg. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.